Okay, this is Chapter 3, Lesson 2, and we are now going to start to get into some of the math. This lesson is going to focus on Sections 3.1 to 3.7, which are pages 82 to 102 in ZoomDoll. And I'm going to split the second half of this chapter into two lessons. In the first lesson, we'll introduce the math, do some basic problems, and then in the third lesson, we'll get into some more complex problems. So we're going to be using mass relationships to inform us about formulas. So things that that might include are um, percent composition, proportions, the relationship between molecular versus empirical formulas, and equalities as far as, and we're going to talk about the molar equalities specifically. Okay, so looking at this first, it says 100 grams of water contains 11.1 .1 grams of hydrogen and 88.9 grams of oxygen. The formula is H2O. So how do we determine that? Well, we could set simply for this one, just set up a proportion. You know, and I'm just going to use round numbers, that oxygen is 16 grams. And you know that in water there is one oxygen. So you have 16 grams of oxygen in one molecule of water, which has an approximate mass of 18 grams. And I'm just using rounded masses right now to show you the relationship. So now we want to know how many grams of oxygen are in a hundred grams of water. So on this we just simply cross multiply and divide and we get 88.89 or approximately 88.9 grams of oxygen which is what they told us. And then a hundred minus 88.9 would give us 11.1 .1 grams of hydrogen. So there's more than one way to solve a problem. I'm going to say that first about this unit. I'm going to show you the easiest way, but certainly if you come up with another way, it may not be wrong. I just ask that you show it to me because what works in one instance may not always work in another instance. So that you want to make sure that whatever you're using, you can apply to all situations. So the easiest way to determine masses of atoms uses a mass spectrometer. That's the most accurate method currently available. And what this instrument does is that atoms or molecules are passed into a beam of high-speed electrons. And that knocks electrons off the atoms or molecules that are being analyzed and causes them to change into positive ions because you've removed some electrons. Then an applied electric field accelerates these positive ions into a magnetic field. Because the accelerating ion produces its own magnetic field, there's an interaction with the applied magnetic field and that changes the path of the ion. The amount that the path deflects basically depends on its mass more massive ions are going to be deflected the smallest amount, which should make sense. This causes ions to separate. And then a comparison of those positions where the ions hit the deflector plate gives you a very accurate value as to their mass. So this is basically showing you what happens when we put a substance in a mass spectrometer. And this is frequently used when, um, in forensics, identifying unknown substances in drug raids or arrest, things of that nature.
this is just showing you the difference between chlorine, carbon, and phosphorus. Here you see that chlorine has two ions and that the chlorine 35 is 75% abundant and the chlorine 37 is only 24% abundant. Middle one's comparing carbon 12 and 13, which makes sense because the average atomic mass is closer to 12 than it is to 13. And then phosphorus um, doesn't have any natural isotopes. The atomic weights are measured in atomic mass units and they're all based on carbon 12. So how does formula weight um, compare to molecular weight? Well, honestly, it is the same exact number. It's just different units. So formula weight, I'm just going to put FW here. Formula weight is measured in AMUs, atomic mass units. And molecular weight, which you commonly know as gram formula mass, is measured in grams. But they have the same numeric value. Let's review percent composition. Percent composition is simply part over whole times 100. That's our formula. And here they want us to find the percent composition of each element for Y, Ba2, Cu3, O7. Nothing like an easy problem to start out with. Now, one thing that's going to be a little different in college chem than regions chem. We used rounded average atomic masses. In super chem, we do not round until we get to our final answer, especially when we're doing empirical molecular formula problems, because if we round too early, it could throw off our answers considerably. So I'm going to just start this problem, and then you can pause me, and I want you to try to finish it up, and then start the video again and see if you get the right answer. So let's start by figuring out what we have. We've got Y, B, A, C, U, and O. And we have one Y times the mass of Y, which is 88.90584. We have two B, A's times the mass of BA, 137.327, and that's going to equal 274.654. We have three coppers times 63.546, which gives us 190.638. And we have 7 oxygens times 15.9994, which gives us 111.9958. There was only one Y. So I need the mass of the whole thing. Six 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 nineteen. 364. So remember percent comp is part over whole times 100. So I'm just going to start with y. So y is going to equal 88.90584 over 666. and I get 13.35%. So if you want, you can pause the video now, do the rest of this, and then check back in with me.
Hopefully you got the same answers that I did. All right, we need a way to count the incredible amount of molecules and also the atoms in a sample. Now, we're going to use molar equivalents. So what we know from previous classes, we know that one mole equals the gram formula mass. I've also mentioned that one mole equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms or molecules, depending on whether or not we're talking about a single atom or one molecule. And one mole also equals 22.4 liters if the substance is a gas. Now, we've taught you in the past that moles are equivalents. We use them as a conversion factor, like that there are 12 inches in a foot. But where did it come from? Well, a mole is the amount of matter that contains as many objects, either atoms, molecules, or whatever other objects we're considering, as the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of isotypically pure carbon-12. From experiments, scientists have determined this number to be Avogadro's number. A mole of atoms, a mole of molecules, or a mole of anything else all contain Avogadro's number of objects. All right, so let's try a practice problem. How many atoms of carbon are in 0.5 moles of carbon? So we're simply going to set up dimensional analysis. I'll number these 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 0.5 moles of carbon. And you know that 1 mole equals 6.02 times 10 the 23rd atoms. Moles cancel and I'm left with 3.01 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Pretty easy. How many molecules of oxygen are in 1.5 moles of oxygen. 1.5 moles of oxygen. Now they didn't say oxygen gas, so we're just assuming it's oxygen. One mole equals Avogadro's number molecules. Moles cancel. And I get 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen. How many atoms would that be? So point 0.25 moles of C6H12O6. And we know that one mole of C6H12O6 has 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. And we're talking about C6H12O6. And we know that one molecule
contains six carbon atoms. So moles cancels, moles cancels, molecules cancels, molecules cancels. So now we're left with carbon atoms, and that's what they're asking for. We get 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. So this is how we're starting to use dimensional analysis in stoichiometric relationships. Okay. Molar mass. You guys know how to calculate molar mass, but I'll write it down. To calculate the molar mass of something, you multiply the number of atoms times the mass for each element in the compound. and then sum all the parts. So let's talk about glucose. I'm going to use round numbers. I have 6 carbons times 12, 12 hydrogens times 1, 6 oxygens times 16. So my formula weight is going to be 180 AMUs. Now when we do it, we're not rounding. Mass of one mole. The mass of one mole is 180 grams per mole. Number of glucose molecules. There is one glucose molecule. Number of carbon atoms. We have six atoms, hydrogen atoms, 12 atoms, and oxygen atoms, six atoms. Getting used to the terminology and what we can do with what we're given. How many nitric acid molecules in 4.2 grams of nitric acid? So we're converting 4.2 grams of nitric acid to molecules. Well, before we can do that, we have to know the GFM of nitric acid. 1 times 1.00794, 1 times 14.0067, and 3 times and I get a total of 63.01284. So we know that one mole has a mass of 63.01284 grams.
and this is HNO3, HNO3. And we want to write that because sometimes we're changing from one substance to another substance, so we need to keep ourselves straight. And we know that one mole of HNO3 contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd 